Less than 50 laps to go now in what was the Pennsylvania 500. It will be shortened because of darkness. 128 complete. We go to 175. Sterling Marlin is the leader. We take you through the field. Marty? His team manager, Tony Glover, told him on the radio a little while ago, Sterling, we have the best car. Take care of it. It's getting the better. The longer he runs, they are pulling away from Bill Elliott. Only five times this year has the leader of the most laps gone on to win the race. Dave. And to try to catch Sterling Marlin, Marty, Bill Elliott is searching for other lines on the racetrack. Crew chief Mike Ford keeps giving him lap times to tell him if they're better or worse. So far, nothing is working. Matt? The 99 of Jeff Burton looking for his first Pocono victory. His car now is gone to the tight side in the center of the corner. Frank Stoddard looking at air pressure adjustments in both right side tires to try to help him. Right now, though, his car is also loose up off the corner, but they're more concerned, Marty, with the tightness. Jimmy Finning, Kurt Busch's crew chief, sits in fourth. Kurt's in fourth. Jimmy said, you're reeling them in. Just keep it up. We will help you on this last stop, meaning they may try some track position strategy. Dale Jarrett behind him in fifth. He is too tight. He says he's getting beat off the corner. Remember his teammate, Ricky Rudd, said earlier today they were getting beat off the corner when it was cloudy and cool. Right now, cloudy and cool. Dave? The 12 car of Ryan Newman, a little bit tight. He radioed into crew chief Matt Berlin that the left front was not down in the track. That accounts for the tightness, but right now his biggest problem is he's got a full mirror of Matt Kenseth. Marty? And Matt is right behind him. He is tight, however, since these clouds have come out. Matt said, I feel like I can run with the leaders if I can just get to him. And the team told him, don't worry about that. You let us worry about that. Dave? Marty, the 20 car of Tony Stewart was loose, but the track bar, air pressure, and wedge adjustment improved the handling of that car. This crew, however, is planning for this race to be shortened by rain. Weber? Kevin Harvick, best in class for the Chevrolets. Last time, four tires, fuel, no adjustments. Hoping to work his way to the front of the field and catch the guys in front of him. Ricky Rudd may have a blistered right rear tire. It's been a struggle for Rudd today, the car not handling the way he had hoped. But right now, Ricky has a blistered right rear. He needs to run about nine more laps to get in his fuel window. He's trying to hang on. As for Dave Blaney, another strong run for this team continues. What they really want now is to get a good finish. We've talked about it in the last couple of weeks. Crew Chief Ryan Pemberton believes Blaney can start finishing up front. They're hoping that will begin here today. This is the five car that Jim Long told me they felt like had the best aero package. They're hoping to showcase how this team has started to make a turnaround. Right now, Terry Labonte says he needs more front grip. They're talking about an air pressure adjustment, Alan. 44 laps to go. Another five, six laps. We'll start to see some people diving onto pit road for a final splash of fuel. Sterling Marlin continues. Get all you can get so we can all leave we can get. There you go, Tony Glover confirming uh, the five to six laps before we'll see the leader in. Let's continue to go through the field. Back to Dave. And the 48 of Jimmy Johnson is picking off spots. He's now up to 13th. The car was still too loose, though. It feels a little bit better. They thought about making a shock change. That's just how much of a handful that Jimmy's had today. Matt? Bobby Labonte, a former winner here at Pocono, has had a very quiet day. He has climbed up to 18th. He's not double shifting like a lot of other drivers. They're looking to make their stop around lap 138 to lap 140. They're talking about an air pressure adjustment down in the right front. Also up a half a pound in the left front. Also the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. He's talked so much about being aero push all year. Now when his car is out of traffic, it's even looser. They're talking about an air pressure adjustment on his final stop. Also a track bar adjustment. Also the 22 car. Remember Ward Burton? He said nine times this year they've had bad luck. Well count at ten, but he's trying to bounce back. He had to swap to the backup ignition box. The car died. He had to go to the backup box. Right now, though, they're talking about making their final adjustment. Also, the 21, Carvelli Sadler. He, too, has bounced back what could have been a horrible problem on pit road. He's running in the 17th position. They're talking about making an adjustment on the track bar. Two rounds down. He says, please, please tighten me up. The car is extremely loose, Bill. Mark Martin could turn out to be the second biggest story of this race, depending on who wins. Came in second in points. Had a voltage meter that said the battery was failing. The team changed the battery under caution, sent him back out. The battery is charging. Martin is hanging on, but still deep in the field. Restarted 25th, climbing into the top 20. Marty? 
Bobby Hamilton is doing a very good job. He will not be back in this car after this year, but will he finish out the whole season at APR? That's the question right now. He is tight. He was tight earlier, rather, but the car is very good right now for Bobby, and he's making his way through the field. Bill? Boy, and a great effort out of Michael Waltrip, who is not feeling very well at all. Believe me when I tell you that. They gave him fluids. They gave him towels. They gave an extra stop on pit road under caution. He gutted it out, went back out there, hanging on tight to that Napa Chevy. Alan, there are your top 20 as we close in on that critical final round of pit stops. Sterling Marlin continuing to hold on to his advantage of a second and a half over Bill Elliott. With Jeff Burton about five seconds behind in third. Looks like it could be settled by those two pit crews of the front two. I'll tell you, there's no question. The 40 guys have got to do the best pit stop they've ever done to keep Sterling out front. And Bill Elliott's the same position. Those guys are going to try to bust up a better pit stop to get in front of the 40 car. And what are they going to do? They're going to change two tires. They're going to just fuel only. What are they going to do that final stop? That, I believe, was uh, the, the Sterling Marlin radio we just heard saying they're coming in next time. And, and wouldn't you, BP, wait till you, wouldn't you want to be the second guy in? Yeah, to find out what the first guy does. Here's Ricky Rudd, going to make the first break to pit road among the leaders. John Andretti was in a minute ago on the green, Bill. Michael McSwain counts Rudd into his pit stall. They go around to the right side, take the tear away off the windshield. Rudd believes he has a blistered right rear tire. You can see the brake smoke, the brake dust just pouring out from these front tires. Around to the left side is a four-tire stop, trying to get as much fuel in as possible. Took just a tad longer than they wanted on the rears. Rudd's on his way. Marty. And it might come down to the pit crew. Sterling Marlin's going to come down next time by Al Schufert, the pit crew coach for Sterling Marlin's team, went to each individual on this pit crew team that goes over the wall, gave them an individual pep talk, told them to focus that this could be the race for the win. It could very well be. There's no doubt about that because... The Kurt Busch, Jeff Burton cars, if they get a good stop and make up a couple of seconds. 12 cars on pit road, Dave. Obviously, uh, technical difficulties there with Dave's microphone. We apologize for that. Here is Ryan Newman to the attention of Matt Borland's crew. Well, what do we get? We got no right side. Going to need a full tank of fuel here. You might as well take all four tires, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Really what this comes down to is no mistakes. That's what we're talking about for Sterling Marlin's crew and all these others. See that? 15.2. Sterling Marlin, if his crew can pull something on around 15 seconds, he'll be okay. And Bill Elliott oh, coming right oh, behind him. Head to head, the duel on pit road. Seven men over the wall, 20 lug nuts, 22 gallons of fuel. Who gets it done the quickest may determine who wins the Pennsylvania 500. And I think Bill made a little bit of time on Sterling getting to the beginning of the pit lane. Oh man, under six seconds on that right side. Had a little trouble on the right front. Looked like a lug nut popped off. 15, 16 seconds. Nine car still there, but he's at the first oh, pit. There he goes. Here he goes. Where's the 40 car? Elliott's got to get that gear going. Sterling's going to get out first. Head to head on pit road. The 40 team holds serve. Tony Stewart's in. Dave Blaney, Jeff Gordon, Ward Burton, Johnny Benson also on pit road. Here come Jeff Burton and Kurt Busch together, Matt. And the 99 car comes in. Remember, we were talking about making an air pressure adjustment on the right side tires. I asked, they also made a wedge adjustment. They were talking about that as well, but then they decided against it. Now, at the last minute, they are going to make a wedge adjustment. If the left side tires go on, crash, possibly Allen. Yes, Jeremy Mayfield, a heavy crash. No caution yet. The flag man on the starter stand still has not waved the caution flag. Jimmy Johnson has taken over the lead. Go ahead, BP. Well, they've got to throw the caution flag. Jimmy Spencer with problems. Right rear tire is flat. Caution is out for the Jeremy Mayfield crash. Caution is out. Track is clear. As far as I can see, the track is clear. You see a little Come bit of a fire the under the left side. And we, we also see Jeremy moving around in the car, taking his gloves off. I was just going to say, do we know drama or what, BP? Oh, man. Now it's going to happen. 
That is over in turn number three. Where Mayfield's car sits. Did he hit the inside wall? See the skid marks coming off the racetrack? And here's the inside wall back there that Allen is talking about. I wonder if he came, I wonder if he came off the corner trying to get to pit road and lost it. Oh yeah, look at the wall. Let's see. He might. Or did he get help? He got, I think he got he a little help. help. Oh. Oh, oh. That's where Jimmy uh, Spencer got his right rear flat. Oh. Man, that was heavy contact. Wow. And Jeremy steers that thing, almost saves it, but it finally can't catch up with it. Hits the 41 car and watch as he goes down and bam into that wall. That's a sudden stop. Yes, it is. One more view on it from overhead. Wait. Just nipped him. Just barely touched him. It and doesn't take a whole lot in no. turn three. And how Jimmy Spencer managed to miss getting more of that. He was lucky. And Jeremy's saying, you know, this is going to hurt. <laughs> and I'm not slowing down on this grass yeah. at all. It's a tore up race car from that. So the fourth caution flag is out in the Pennsylvania 500 with 36 laps to go. The guys who did not stop under the green flag get to commit and make their stop under the caution, but because of the big nature of this racetrack, when the other leaders did come in, they did not get trapped a lap down. Talking about Sterling Marlin and all the rest of that, they should stay on the racetrack here and re-inherit the top spot. But they completely erased the gap yeah. before the yellow. These are all lead lap cars who are in. Matt? Elliot Sadler coming in, making his final stop. He's in the second position. They're already coming around to the left side of the car. Left side tires going on. Remember, he was asking them to please tighten him up, made an air pressure adjustment. A little bit of trouble with Jay Granary on the left rear. Dave? Two tires only for Jimmy Johnson. A pair of scuff tires on the right side, packed full of fuel. The tires were chosen specifically by Chad Knauss himself, who is the crew chief. Alan? But all these cars that come out are going to start behind those who pitted under the green already. Headed by Sterling Marlin. He's going to come back around into the lead, but now Bill Elliott's got another shot at him to try and steal this win away here at Pocono. 